Hello, Tito. Um, on July 4, we will be celebrating the Phil-Am or the Filipino-American Friendship Day. So this is now um, our topic of our chikahan. No? Uh, Tito, can you e- elaborate more in detail to the younger generation why there are two important dates, the June 12 and the July 4 to remember? What is the difference between the two of them? Uh, June 12, 1898 was the date when Aguinaldo proclaimed the national independence of the Philippines and signaled the uprisings that toppled Spanish colonialism on a national scale. But uh, there was an expression in the proclamation that depreciated its value. It described Philippine independence as being under the protection of the mighty and noble USA, manifesting the willingness of Aguinaldo to make the Philippines a protectorate. So many of our people prefer August 23, 1896, as the day of uh, independence for the old democratic revolution when Andres Bonifacio declared national independence and started the armed revolution against the Spanish colonial regime. July 4, 1946, was the date when Manuel Rojas declared national independence and inaugurated the Republic of the Philippines. But this independence was fake or grossly incomplete, preconditioned by the U.S. RP Treaty of General Relations, which made the Philippines a semi-colony of the U.S. and the Republic, a puppet one, no different of the fake uh, independence bestowed by Japan to the Philippines uh, during the Japanese occupation. The treaty retained U.S. military bases, the property rights of U.S. corporations and citizens, and U.S. control of Philippine trade and diplomatic relations. The full independence of the Philippines in the new democratic revolution is still to be decided by the revolutionary party of the proletariat. It could be the date when the current armed revolution started or when the guide for establishing the People's Democratic Government or was issued, uh, or best of all, when the armed revolution will achieve nationwide victory uh, with the overthrow of the counter-revolutionary state of the big compradors, landlords, and bureaucrat capitalists in the cities. By the way, the Kapatang Makabayan used to make ceremonial declarations of independence on the birthday of Andres uh, Bonifacio from 1964 onward because uh, the KM never agreed that uh, uh, the Philippines uh, has been granted no? independence by a foreign power. Tito, why are we still celebrating July 4 and calling it Philippine American Friendship Day? Well, I think... Um, the uh, uh, there is friendship between the Filipino and uh, uh, American people. Uh, the problem is uh, uh, is the U.S. government. Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, some Filipinos have become American citizens, and uh, uh, many of them are active in the People's Democratic Revolution, or in uh, they are in solidarity with the People's Democratic Revolution in the Philippines. Uh, you see, um, uh, the U.S. has retained control over the Philippines. It keeps the Philippines uh, as a um, uh, as uh, semi-colonial politically. The um, uh, it is the Philippine government uh, uh, or the counter-revolutionary semi-colonial state of the Philippines that is celebrating July 4 as Philippine American Friendship Day in collaboration with the U.S. government. It was worse when the same semi-colonial state and puppet republic celebrated July 4 as the Philippine Day of Independence. The celebration of July 4 as Philippine American Friendship signifies the continuing subservience of the semi-colonial state to U.S. imperialism, but I believe that at the level of the American and Filipino peoples, there is no problem. Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, 
we should do everything in our power to develop the solidarity between the Filipino and American people. You see, at this moment, the American people are rising up against the American state uh, because of the extreme racism of uh, the white uh, supremacists in the in the U.S. Uh, the um, uh, the African Americans have been oppressed for too long, and it is just uh, right that people of all races in the U.S. are rising up against uh, the U.S. imperialist state. Um, Tito, why don't we celebrate the Philippine American Fr Friendship Day publicly? The Filipino people and the revolutionary forces do not celebrate Philippine American Friendship Day in, uh, in the same servile spirit and fashion that the Philippine colonial state does. Uh, uh, they, they have no wish to compete with the Philippine government. Uh, they have the initiative in celebrating uh, this day as the friendship uh, between the semi-colonial state and uh, the master imperialist state, no? Um, but uh, in so far as July 4 is the Independence Day for the American people, we have no problem with the American people celebrating it, no? They have uh, drawn their own limitations of, uh, of uh, you know, Jefferson and company when they, uh, uh, when declare independence from British colonialism, uh, you know, they were still running as, as a slavery uh, during the time. Jefferson, you know, had plenty of slaves, you know? But uh, in, in relative to, uh, to British colonialism, uh, the Declaration of Independence was uh, a progress in the history of the American people. Uh, the, I would repeat, there is no problem for Filipinos and Filipino organizations to convey greetings of solidarity to their American counterparts who value the day as their Independence Day. Um, Tito, why do the National Democrats say that the Philippines is still not free from the United States? As I have earlier pointed out, U.S. continues to dominate the Philippines as a colony. It has done so since the preconditioning of the grant of national independence with the USRP Treaty of General Relations. It has encumbered the Philippines with more treaties, agreements, and arrangements that subordinate the Philippines as a semi-colony, or sometimes you call it neo-colony to US imperialism, economically, politically, militarily, and culturally. Tito, they say that the analysis of the ND activists on the imperialist countries are already outdated. There is no imperialism anymore, but rather a multipolar world. Is it true, or is it also true that US is no longer a superpower? It is not true that imperialism has gone out of existence and that the U.S. is no longer an imperialist superpower. Imperialism or monopoly capitalism exists in the U.S. and several other industrial capitalist countries. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, the world capitalist system has just recruited uh, uh, China and uh, Russia, the remnant of the Soviet Union, uh, fully. Uh, they have become members of the world capitalist system and they uh, function as imperialist powers. Uh, the use of such terms as unipolar, bipolar, and uh, multipolar world is anchored on the existence of imperialism. For instance, when there was the Cold War between the two superpowers, US imperialism and Soviet social imperialism, the world was described as bipolar by political analysts. When the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991, the U.S. was referred to as the sole superpower in a unipolar world. <clears throat> Since the financial crash of 2008, the term multipolar world has become more than ever frequently used, with the U.S. maintaining a more pronounced, uh, manifesting, rather, a more pronounced strategic decline because of its worsening economic crisis and the heavy cost of its overseas military bases and endless wars of aggression. And at the same time with China and Russia rising as new imperialist powers and forming blocks of countries 
independent of the US, such as the BRICS and the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Because you're aware that the US has its own control over the IMF, World Bank, and uh, uh, WTO, and has military uh, treaties with other countries on a multilateral and bilateral basis. Despite the accelerated strategic decline of the US, it, it is still an imperial superpower and maintains high-tech military superiority over other imperialist powers. Since 2018, the U US imperialism has become more wary of imper Chinese imperialism and accuses China of unfair economic, financial, and trade practices and stealing technology from the US and becoming an economic and military rival of the US. The, the inter-imperialist contradictions between the US and China are sharpening, thus certain political analysts say that a new Cold War has arisen and that there is a return to the bipolar world. Let's see whether that, that term will uh, stick according to the realities. Tito, Duterte had uh, 275 billion pesos to supposedly provide for financial assistance to the marginalized and unemployed due to the COVID-19. But throughout his press conference, he keeps on saying that he doesn't have money anymore. The Philippines now has a 7 to 8 trillion international debt. Where is Duterte using all his money and how is the Philippines going to pay for this? Duterte has used the COVID-19 pandemic to escalate the repressive measures and human rights violations against the Filipino people. Butcher people and the guerrilla fronts of the revolutionary movement deprive the people of livelihood, medical care, food assistance, and uh, other forms of relief, and steal hundreds of billions of pesos, or three even trillions from the public treasury. Uh, private company donations and loans and grants from abroad by faking receipts of purchases of medical supplies and overpricing them among uh, um, several tricks of uh, uh, corruption. Duterte has uh, bankrupted the Philippine economy and his own government. The bankruptcy is so deep going that there's no way the Philippine government can pay back the mountains of foreign debt. He cannot pay for the loans by taking more foreign loans indefinitely <clears throat> because the world capitalist system is now in a severe crisis, far worse than the Great Depression of the 1930s. The IMF, the World Bank, and the OECD have already issued estimates that the global GDP will dive by as much as 4.9% to 6% in 2020. The impact will be worse on the underdeveloped and debt-laden countries like the Philippines. Tito, there are videos circulating in the internet that the Philippines is surrounded by U.S. and Chinese warships. Is there a truth in it or how dangerous is it for the country? It is true that the U.S. and China are making shows of strength in the South China Sea. China has made the provocations by intensifying its activities to assert its false claims, fortify its positions, and further encroach on the sovereign and maritime rights of the Southeast Asian countries under international law and the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea. Thus, the Southeast Asian governments, with the exception of the Duterte regime, have protested, and uh, the US has demonstrated support for them and asserted freedom of navigation in the South China Sea. The US and China are calculating and calibrating their moves, which are essentially demonstrations of naval and air power in the Asia Pacific region. The US high-tech military might is far superior to that uh, of China, but the US will not attack China because this has enough nuclear power to destroy the US, and the US wants to mobilize first the anger of the Southeast Asian countries against its imperialist rival. China is also afraid to attack the U.S. naval fleet in the, East, in the South China Sea and the Pacific because it will surely be destroyed 
by U.S. military power and is in fact trying hard to counter the impact of its deteriorating relations with uh, the U.S. So, you know, there is a balance of terror between the two imperialist powers. Uh, it's, uh, uh, there is what you call a situation of mutual, uh, uh, mutual deterrence, reminiscent of the Cold War. Should Duterte or the Philippines, for this matter, start siding with China instead of U.S. to defeat U.S.? It is wrong and traitorous for Duterte to allow Chinese imperialism to build and militarize artificial islands in the exclusive economic zone of the Philippines in the West Philippine Sea. Take control over the rich marine and mineral resources in the West Philippine Sea and take over the Scarborough or Panatag uh, Shoal. The Filipino people struggle for full national independence is chiefly directed against U.S. imperialism, but it does not allow Chinese imperialism to violate the sovereign rights of the Filipino people. Fighting Spanish colonialism was never a license for surrendering the country to U.S. imperialism. The revolutionary movement must be consistent in fighting imperialism, whether it is that of the U.S. or China. There is certainly going to be a war in the West Philippine Sea, and Duterte is the first to blame. He is not just compromising the safety of the Filipino people, but also neighboring ASEAN countries. How will this affect the already stale relationship of Duterte with the international communi community? Is it too late to stop this war, or what should we do to stop this? As I have already explained, there is no certainty of war breaking out in the South China Sea within the U.S. and China, at least within the next few years. Uh, you can't blame Duterte for a war that is not yet burst out. We can hold Duterte accountable for allowing and encouraging China to take over the West Philippine Sea in violation of Philippine sovereign rights. The U.N. Um, Convention on the Law of the Sea and the 2016 judgment of the Permanent Arbitration Court in favor of the Philippines against China, and also for failing to unite with the other ASEAN countries in opposing China's illegal claim over 90% of the South China Sea. If I may elaborate a little, you know, you know, the, it's not just because the, the sea is called South China Sea, uh, China owns it, no? Uh, in the same manner that uh, India cannot own the Indian Ocean just because it is called the Indian Ocean. Or uh, uh, Italy cannot invoke uh, the Roman Empire to be able to claim the entire Mediterranean uh, uh, Sea for itself. Huh? So we should not be misled by you know, the name uh, South China Sea, which B British cartographers adopted. As a matter of fact, the Chinese always call that sea South Sea. It's the British cartographers who call it South China Sea. Now, you can hold, we can hold Duterte accountable for being a, a traitor and a complete moron. As a moron, he has failed to bring charges against China before the UN and appropriate courts for violating the sovereign rights of the Philippines illegally occupying the artificial islands in the West Philippine Sea and damaging the marine environment, and demand payment for rent, and damages to the environment in the same manner as the U.S. was required to pay for damages, where it's both damage a part of the Tutuwa Reef. The Philippines can actually sue China in the U.S. and other countries where China has assets to pay for obligations and damages. But the worst stupidity of Duterte is to allow China to prevent the Philippines from exploring and exploiting the oil, gas, and other mineral resources in the exclusive economic zone of the Philippines in the West Philippine Sea. These resources are worth several tens of trillions of U.S. dollars, which could save the Philippines from underdevelopment and the humiliation of the eternal beggar of foreign loans from the imperialist countries. But uh, this uh, short, tight, 
short, short-sighted and small-minded Duterte, you know, prefers to take uh, bribe money from China than uh, to uh, develop the resources that the Philippines has. Tito, it might be hard to believe that Duterte is treading on dangerous waters because of the ongoing tensions and the provocation between U.S. and China. Thus, can you explain why Duterte is doing this? Why is he putting the lives of the millions of Filipino people in danger? Duterte is criminally responsible for allowing and encouraging China to assert its false claim of owning more than 90% of the South China Sea and to take over the West Philippine Sea as its own sovereign property. Because of this, he's also responsible for aiding and abetting the Chinese acts of aggression against the Philippines and other ASEAN countries, and for creating a situation in which the US comes into play as defender of the right to free navigation and supporter of the sovereign rights of the ASEAN countries against the Chinese acts of aggression. Uh, but you see, um, I would also like to call the attention of people at the, the U.S. while it was very friendly to China, hesitated also to express support to the ASEAN countries at the time that China uh, was uh, beginning uh, to uh, build and militarize artificial islands in the South China Sea. So, uh, you know, right now the U.S. is pretending to be a supporter of the ASEAN countries, but it's only out of its own national interest that it is doing so. But the ASEAN countries can play off these two monsters and, uh, you know, uh, derive uh, uh, certain advantages from the inter-imperialist contradictions. How is this commotion affecting the livelihood of the fisher folks in these areas? We've seen that in the past and even up to today, in the thick of the pandemic, the fisher folks are being bullied by the Chinese fishing vessels, pro prohibited to make living inside our territories. In the thick of the pandemic, the fisher folks are facing demolitions and reclamation. How is this new to international situation going to affect them? I agree with you that in the past and even up to today, in the thick of the pandemic, the Filipino fisher folks are being rammed and bullied by the Chinese fishing vessels and prohibited to make a living inside the West Philippine Sea. The fisher folks are facing demolition and reclamation projects in the interest of the Chinese criminal triads engaged in operating casinos and in drug smuggling. Uh, that's because Duterte is in cahoots with them and get a lot of uh, uh, money from them. I do not mind if the U.S. uses its military fleet to stop China from committing acts of aggression in the West Philippine Sea and occupying the artificial islands. The U.S. should also stop from continuing to support Duterte just because he, he made a promise to Trump in 2017 uh, that he would terminate the peace negotiations uh, with uh, the NDFP and destroy the armed revolution through sheer military force. Duterte cannot stay longer, a day longer in power if the U.S. asserts within the reactionary armed forces um, its, uh, uh, its influence among the pro-U.S. Uh, generals. Um, the... The U.S. for U.S. generals can can uh, withdraw military support from Duterte in the same way uh, that the pro U.S. military officers in 1986 uh, withdrew military support from Marcos. Uh, I think uh, by this time uh, the uh, uh, most responsible. Uh, strategy planners of the U.S. are already, already seeing Duterte as more of, a, uh, a more of a liability, more of a junk than uh, a positive asset for them. It is still a puzzle why the pro-U.S. generals in the U.S. and PNP continues to support Duterte, despite China taking control over the national power grid 
and telecommunications and putting cell towers and military camps in contradiction with the enhanced defense cooperation agreement which allows the U.S. to have its own bases within the, the U.S., the AFP military camp. Tito, on June to, July 12, 2016, permanent court of arbitration ruled in favor of the Philippines. So what is China still doing in our sovereign waters? And why did Duterte allow the invasions of the Philippines by China? What should the PCA or the international community do? I have already pointed out that uh, Duterte is a traitor and complete moron for failing to hold the 2016 judgment of the Permanent Court of Arbitration in favor of the Philippines against China. Instead, he has condoned and emboldened China to occupy, build, and militarize the artificial islands and control the waters that belong to the Philippines. The, Philippine, the Philippines can charge China for the violation of Philippine sovereign rights and demand compensation for illegal occupation and damage to the marine environment before the appropriate court, especially in countries where China has assets that can pay for obligations and uh, damages. Thank you so much, Tito, for having this chikahan with us um, in Anakbayan, Tito. Um, do you have any messages to the youth in Europe and in the Philippines before we end? I call on the Anakbayan and the entire Filipino youth in Europe and in the Philippines to intensify their common efforts to fight and oust the Duterte regime of butchers and crooks. They must carry out the oust Duterte movement within the framework of the Filipino people's revolutionary struggle for national and social liberation. Of course, Anakbay and the Filipino youth in the Philippines have the magnitude and the most potential for intensifying all forms of revolutionary struggle, not only for changing the reactionary ruling clique, but also for making significant advances in the new democratic revolution against the semi-colonial and semi-feudal ruling system. They contribute to the advance of the anti-imperialist and democratic struggles of the youth and people of the world and need international solidarity and support. Anakbayan and the Filipino youth in Europe and elsewhere abroad have the special role and duty of speaking freely and availing of the high-tech means of immediate communication to support and coordinate with the Anakbayan and the Filipino youth in real time and at the same time gain the international solidarity and support of the youth of the world for the struggle for full national independence and democratic rights against foreign monopoly capitalism and the local exploiting classes now chiefly represented by the traitorous, tyrannical, murderous, and plundering ruling clique headed by Duterte. Thank you so much, Tito, for um, um, being with us today. And that is our episode of Chikahan with Tito Jo, the Philippine-American Friendship Day. <music>